Hello, Unbreak Me here with a look at the LEGO Mindstorms Robot Inventor set number 51515. When LEGO introduces a brand new robotic system, it is a historic event. LEGO robotic systems have been around since 1998 with the Robotic Command Explorer or the RCX system. Then in 2006 we got the amazing NXT system which is still my favorite till this day. Then in 2013 we got the EV3 system and finally in 2020 we're getting the new Spike Prime system. Many fans believe this system to be a slight downgrade from the previous EV3 system. So in this review, we will be going over everything this brand new set has to offer and we will be making slight comparisons to the previous EV3 and NXT systems and I will also teach you how you can program this robot in the Scratch 3.0 system and I will also be briefly going over Python. So here I have built the very first robot and his name is Tricky and Tricky is a beautiful robot, he's actually the easiest one to build out of all of them and essentially a Lego gives you a really basic program at the beginning to just run with Tricky. Essentially after you put your hand in front of the ultrasonic distance sensor it's just gonna spin around a little bit and I think uh, you know this is a really cool introduction to coding it's a really really nice experience but honestly this isn't actually the main appeal of Tricky. You can actually connect many different modules so we actually need to build the module to connect it to Tricky and all the building instructions of course are digital on my tablet or on your computer uh, they they are not printed it does not come with printed instructions but it does come with a little booklet here on the right hand side and essentially when you see something like um, take one three long axle if you don't know how long a three stud axle is you can just measure it on this little cheat sheet on the right so I think that is really neat. Now this program will just grab the ball, spin around for a little bit, and then it'll throw it. I mean, I love this program. You can uh, literally customize your tricky robot. I mean, I love this robot so much. It looks pretty fantastic, and I do love the way it throws the ball. It's quite fast, actually. It's a really, really great design. Now here is actually where it gets really interesting. As you can see, I built sort of a basketball hoop in addition to this tricky robot, and look at that. I mean, it just slam dunks the ball, the missiles or the fireworks go off. It's such a cool design. You cannot get any better than this. Or can you? How about we also make Tricky follow the line and after he's done following the line, he slam dunks the ball and the missiles go off. And it's a built-in activity into the app. I really love this activity. Uh, right now I put my robot on the NXT 1.0 test pad because that is a test pad that has a really good black line on a white background. But unfortunately the new robot inventor set doesn't even come with a test pad. I mean, why? In the RCX system, we got a test pad. In the NXT 1.0, 2.0, even in the EV3, we got a test pad. So how come we're not getting a test pad anymore? I mean, this was one of the truly greatest aspects of robotics, but I want to show you how well it follows the line. So right now, as you can see, Tricky is just following the black line on the test pad. And as soon as he reaches the basketball hoop, he's just going to detect that with a color sensor, slam dunk the ball, the missiles go off, it's an amazing thing. If you break down the Scratch 3.0 program of following the line and then dunking the ball into this little hoop, you can actually see that the program is very, very interesting. So if you take out these blocks over here, you can actually see that it's start moving and this is a variable inside over here. So straight equals zero and then if you turn it right, you know, it increases and if you go left, it uh, decreases into the negative values so essentially what this block does over here is it creates a value of some sort for the uh, movement to the right or to the left and this is uh, some really interesting math over here it essentially does the uh, reflected light of the color sensor so white or black and it just multiplies it by two and then sub and then subtracts 60. you'd really have to understand how the reflective light works and all that good stuff in order to uh, really you know 
do the math on your own, but you can just use this as an example to follow the light. So that is a really, really interesting part of the program that you can also use in your own line following programs. And it's also really smooth, you know, if the light is like 50-50, both black and white, you know, it's in the middle of the line, it'll just keep going straight. If it's white, it'll go, you know, right. And if it's totally black, it'll go left. So that is a really really cool program. Right now I just want to show you the MVP buggy or actually the modular vehicle platform and I really really like this car because it actually does use the differential here on the back. Uh, in a Mindstorms kit this is the first time ever we have seen a differential so I really appreciate that and it's a brand new one so that's awesome. The first activity actually just you know it's really basic all it does is essentially just calibrates the steering and then makes the modular vehicle platform just spin in a circle. It's really basic. But here's where it gets really interesting. You can actually use your phone to remotely control the modular vehicle platform. I think this is absolutely incredible. I mean, this is really, really great. And it makes perfect sense why the new system doesn't include a infrared distance sensor like the EV3 did, because you can simply use Bluetooth to control the robot with your phone. It's really great and you can actually, you know, customize the controls however you like. You can customize the scratch program. You can customize pretty much every aspect of this controller. So I do really appreciate it. And actually I want to show you two different modules that this modular vehicle platform has. The first one is the crane. Now the crane is really really great because it can actually you know spin left and right and it can actually you know extend grab something pick it up it's a really great playing experience i love playing with this modular vehicle platform i love playing with the crane of course you do remotely control this so it's not like it's fully automated but i think you can pretty easily code this thing to have it uh, be fully autonomous and such and it also does have a color sensor so it can uh, detect which crate you're picking up and it lets you know on the screen which uh, color the color sensor is detecting. I do really appreciate that aspect of it. Uh, honestly, I mean, it looks great. It just extends, you know, picks things up. It's a great little crane and another really, really cool module for this vehicle is actually the turret and the turret I think is probably my favorite module out of all of these because just how interactive and playable it is obviously you do use a remote control you know bluetooth from your phone but I, what I really do like about this is that you actually have to shoot these two targets both the blue one and the white one to make the ball go down so and now let's align it to the white target over here so as you can see we're approaching with the modular vehicle platform and boom it fires and just like that the ball goes down this course it's a really awesome and playable thing i also do appreciate that whenever you move the turret up or down or something like that the eyes light up on the ultrasonic sensor and if you're firing the right bullet the right eye lights up and if you're firing the left bullet the left eye lights up so this is a really cool thing it's just it looks really amazing honestly the modular vehicle platform combine it with the cannon just imagine the things you could do if you were to program this thing you know fully autonomously using some sort of really advanced code you can really create like a machine learning algorithm see if if something is moving and if something is moving you know you point the turret towards that boom you fire you hit the target i love this robot so much it is definitely one of my favorites the modular the modular vehicle platform turret activity also actually does come with uh, two more targets and you know they're just really really basic i don't really like them because I mean, there's really nothing to do after you hit the targets. I mean, you hit the targets and it's nothing special. Now I actually want to talk about Blast. This is the main attraction of the set in my opinion. It is such a great robot. His right arm does have two bullets, which he can shoot of course. 
and he's built using a really great mechanism. Essentially, uh, his chest contains a differential, and when his arms are in the down position, his head moves, but when his head can't move past a certain point, the arms start moving. So that is a really creative way to make both the head and the arms move just using one motor. I do really appreciate this mechanism a lot. And actually, I want to compare the Blast Robot to the EV3 Everstorm really quickly. So the EV3 Everstorm is actually a bit taller than the Blast Robot, probably about like a full maybe head taller than him or something. He also does, you know, have the spikes on the head which make him a lot taller. So, you know, Everstorm is kind of cheating. Everstorm is a bigger guy, but... Who do you think is going to win in a fight? Either Everstorm or Blast? I'm placing my bets on Everstorm, and let's have them fight. Fight! Oh my gosh! Wow, look at that! Apparently the new robot is stronger. Wow, honestly I'm surprised by the outcome of this fight. I really did not think that Blast would win. But you know, there's a saying. Technology gets smaller and better as time and time goes on. I'll also talk about the Robot Blast more in my basics of coding section of this review. But for now, let's take a look at the Robot Charlie. Charlie is a really cute robot. He does use the white mudguard panel as his smile. And I do really appreciate that because you can make the, a white Land Rover Defender in LEGO Technic. But when you're done building him, the very first program you get is actually a dance sequence. So let's watch this. One thing I really appreciate about the robot Charlie is that if you spin his right arm backwards, then his head will go up or down. That is really cool. And if you spin his right arm uh, downwards or, you know, forwards, essentially his front panel is going to open up. So I think this is a really neat feature of the robot Charlie. Unfortunately, he does not come equipped with the ultrasonic sensor by default, but you know, it shouldn't be too hard to modify him just to add the distance sensor so that way he can, you know, avoid obstacles and all that good stuff. But this is actually just the tip of the iceberg for Charlie. You can build a drum set for Charlie, give him some drumsticks, and he will play some music. Watch this. Isn't that incredible? You can actually take this one step further and add bullets on either side. So he's gonna play some music and then he's gonna play some more music and he's gonna fire these two missiles. Watch this. I mean, you gotta love it. Charlie is definitely one of the best robots of the new LEGO Mindstorm set. Maybe the last robot that we will take a look at is actually gonna be better than this one. Meet Jello. He's a four-legged robot who kind of resembles the Boston Dynamics spot robot dog. And I just love the way he walks. I mean, he uses four motors to uh, create the walking motion. He also has a color sensor and an ultrasonic sensor on at the front, so that way he can see distance and color. And he also uses absolute positioning on the motors to synchronize all the legs. So you no longer need a touch sensor to synchronize walking robots and in my opinion that is a huge advancement over both the EV3 and the NXT systems we had in the past. One activity you can make for Jello is to set up sort of these obstacles and the program is essentially kind of you know exploring around but as soon as he detects an obstacle in front of him he's gonna ram into it full speed. I think this is a pretty cool design. 
Another really cool program you get with this robot is obstacle avoidance. So essentially, uh, he's going to walk forwards as soon as he sees an obstacle. He's going to randomly walk either left or right, and then he'll, you know, turn. I love the way he turns. And then he's going to continue on by with his day just walking for forwards, avoiding obstacles as much as he can. I do really appreciate this. But one of my favorite... But my favorite aspect of the robot Jello is definitely being able to control him with my phone. The remote control for this is just so awesome. Obviously, you know, the, with these buttons and controls, you can just make him, you know, walk forward, backwards, left, right, all that good stuff. But the main attraction, the main appeal of this controller, in my opinion, is that if you push this button, the robot Jello is going to stand up. And if you push this button, the robot Jello is going to do a flip. Isn't that like super cool? I mean, if we take a look at just the robots, you know, I think that just these robots, like we're not taking the technology into account here, the robots themselves are so much better than the ones we got with the EV3 system. Now I want to do somewhat of a comparison between the RCX, NXT, EV3, and the brand new uh, robot inventor, or the Spike Prime system. So uh, I just want to compare the startup times for each of them. The RCX has an instantaneous start time. As soon as you press the button, boom, it's on like that. The NXT takes about three seconds to start on or so. Then the uh, Spike Prime system takes uh, a, a little longer, you know, not as long as the EV3 system. The EV3 system takes so long to power on. I actually did compare this before. The EV3 turns on slower than my MacBook Pro. That is awful. It has the worst startup time of all of them. Now let's take a look at the screen of each of them. The RCX screen is obviously, you know, really, really basic. You could just cycle between the different programs. The screen really didn't offer you that much at all. It had, you know, RCX by today's standards is a pretty basic system, although uh, back in the late 90s it was a pretty revolutionary thing. The NXT, however, had a really great interface. You could go into the software files, pick between the NXT files, sound files, data log files, software files, which were essentially just the programs that you put on the NXT. You had the NXT programming interface, you had the NXT data log, the NXT view, Bluetooth settings, just so much more than the RCX system. Man, I love the NXT so much. The EV3 also had a fantastic interface, which actually had an operating system based on Linux and uh, this is just the you know the sort of the home startup page then if you go to the right tab you could see all your programs and if you uh, one more tab to the right you could see the port view motor control IR control and brick program the brick programming interface of the EV3 was actually a, an upgrade over the NXT as you could you know program a lot more and you weren't limited to just a certain amount of blocks and the last tab of the EV3 is the settings, and it had all the cool info and stuff like that. The new Spike Prime system actually does have a really cool Tetris-style screen, obviously. A lot of people don't like this, but I actually kind of prefer the Tetris-style screen. It looks really clean, nice, minimalistic, and it results in a much smaller hub than the previous Intelligent Bricks, both the EV3 and, and NXT. So you can make much uh, more compact robots or integrate them easier into Technic sets or, you know, just your Technic creations. I'd really appreciate that. Uh, the screen can actually display a variety of different shapes. The Spike Prime Hub, believe it or not, can actually write out words. Although it is like a strip, it goes from right to left, but I still think it's really cool. And the way you cycle through all your different programs is just by using these little arrow buttons. So you could cycle between programs number zero through program number 19, resulting in a total maximum number of programs of 20 different programs. So I think that is a really cool thing. Um, if you go back to this initial shape on the startup, and if you press the middle button over here, Essentially, now you get like sort of a port control or port interface. And if you connect a motor over here, you can actually see that uh, the interface does change. 
and you can just use these these little arrows to control both the speed and the direction of the motor i think that is really neat and obviously you know you can also connect some sensors such as the ultrasonic sensor and it'll give you a distance reading obviously you know not uh not in centimeters or inches uh, it'll just you know give you a certain number of squares so you can actually do data logging on the spike prime hub uh, over here to port number c i have connected a mindstorm the new mindstorms motor uh, to port number e uh, it's a blank zero unit which is just my powered up large motor which can actually be programmed on your spike prime hub it, so you can literally just connect the uh powered up motors to your spike prime hub and you can send them a program you know have it rotate uh, constantly for 90 degrees or just create so many cool different complex programs you can literally tear out the control plus hub from your control control plus models replace it with the spike prime hub code it in python or with scratch 3.0 from your computer and you have an amazing little technic robot so that is really neat um but let's get back to the data logging um you can also get live data readings on the sensor uh, for the, both the ultrasonic sensor and you can also get live data readings on the color sensor the tilt angle data readings the orientation readings the gyro rate the acceleration readings you can also manage all your different programs like i said it's uh, zero through number 19. you can delete whichever ones you like you can just see how many kilobytes they all take up it's a really nice little interface system and i do like this a lot in both the NXT and EV3 motors, you could actually put an axle through the motor. So that it resulted in some really strong connection points and really strong models. The axle would never fall out, it would stick in there like glue. Unfortunately, the new motor does not maintain this functionality. But I still consider the new motor to be... Uh, better than the previous ev3 and nxt motors because it has absolute positioning if you simply run this program to have it you know go the shortest path to position number zero you can see that it'll always end up in position number zero this is extremely useful for synchronizing walkers and it's a really useful feature i also really appreciate that the new motor is much smaller than the previous ev3 EV or nxt motor so right now i'm just going to show you the very basics of programming and essentially we're going to be using the robot blast over here to uh, program a very basic obstacle avoidance program he will go either left or right after seeing an obstacle it'll be random so let's get started so over here on my tablet is the coding interface and essentially this coding interface is pretty much exactly the same as in uh, the spike prime system and it's going to be exactly the same once the computer version of the mindstorms uh, app comes out and so first thing we want to do is maybe create some sort of sound for the robot so let's uh, tap on the uh, sound over here and then maybe let's uh, get a play sound and over here it's not just cat meow one we can go here and we can click on add sound and essentially it says hub uh, sounds on the hub and these are all the sounds that can uh, play from the hub itself and if you use the editor or the recorder or something like that it will not come out of your uh a robot it'll essentially come out of your mobile device or your computer so that's kind of uh, an important thing to know but unfortunately you know it cannot really uh, speak it cannot really say like proper words see this is the maximum see these these types of sounds are the maximum the robot can do now let's just uh, do the play sound over here or maybe we'll do a success chime yeah, this, this sound sounds good. And then we'll click Add to Canvas. And then over here we can see is the success chime on the hub. We play sound success chime until done. Maybe uh, let's turn on... Um... Now maybe let's set the center light button to not red, but maybe to like a blue color over here. So this button over here on the hub is essentially gonna turn blue. So I think that is gonna be really neat. So now let's actually get onto the program. Over here, we'll go with the control tab and we'll just use a forever loop over here. And then in the inside the forever loop, I wanna have 
movement and I want to set the movement which is essentially motors running synchronously and the motor block is just you know one motor running synchronously but movement can run too and we need to set the movement motors to C and A essentially uh, because these motors are you know the ones that are controlling the wheels and also let's set the movement speed to maybe perhaps like a hundred percent or no let's go with 50 percent that should be sufficient now we're just gonna <clears throat> put the block start moving straight zero and essentially you can just change the value over here but i'm gonna just leave it at straight because it needs to go to straight now we're gonna put a wait until block so essentially it's gonna start moving straight and then it's gonna wait until something now we're gonna put a sensor over here wait until the uh, ultrasonic sensor is closer than perhaps let's go with 30 centimeters so this is the ultrasonic sensor over here and as soon as it sees an obstacle it's gonna stop the movement so let's drag and drop the stop moving block over here and now we want to have it turn but we don't want to just have it turn left or right we want to have it randomized so so right now let's drag and drop a if then block and else over here which is essentially like a switch from the NXT G programming interface and we're gonna uh, set a variable we're gonna uh, go over here and let's make a variable we'll just call it X and boom right over here we uh, have a variable over here so let's put this block set X to and we want to not have it zero we want to have it random so we will we'll, we will go to the operator section and we will just do the pick random from not let's go with one to a hundred I think that sounds far more fun and then let's do operators again and then we will do a comparison block so if variable so do you understand the program right now? Essentially, after it stops, it's going to pick a random number from 1 to 100, and then it's going to see if it's less than 50. If the number is less than 50, let's have it turn left. And if it's more than 50, it's going to turn right. Essentially, this is a randomizer. So I think that is really cool. Let's uh, movement. Let's move uh, degrees. Maybe let's go with 180 Let's have it turn right, or no, turn left. And then we can just uh, tap and hold on it, uh, press duplicate, and then we can do to the right. So I think this program should work. Let's test it out. So as you can see, he just uh, played a sound and set his light to blue over here. And then he just went forward. And after he saw an obstacle, he went either left or right, and then continued on with his program. I love this obstacle avoidance program. It's one of my favorites ever, and I really am happy that Blast is working right now. You can also program your robot in Python, which is a much more advanced interface. It's line-by-line -line coding, and as right now I'm on the iPad, I cannot really do any fast typing. But uh, you still can program if you use an external keyboard or, you know, just you, you type with the iPad buttons. But essentially what I like is you get this knowledge base over here, and you can use the word block translator. And essentially you can just translate your program from the, block scra from the scratch block interface into Python. So I think that is really, really neat. So, you know, let's just copy and paste some of these. You know, we want to set the movement motors to A and C, and we want to move about 10 centimeters forward. So let's just copy and paste this. Uh, so let's just copy and paste this sort of uh, text. All right, so, so it says motor pair, motor pair A and B, and instead we need to change it to A and C over here, and then a parenthesis. Then default speed is 50, and then we can move maybe uh, 10 uh, centimeters perhaps, or... All right, now let's test out this Python program. So actually my robot ran backwards, so instead we need to change this 50 value to a negative number, and let's just uh, see the minus sign over here. And now I think it should run. It should run perfectly. All right, let's test it. Yeah, boom! 
I just programmed my first robot ever in Python, and I can't wait to uh, really uh, use all the Python possibilities to its maximum. I mean, I love this coding interface, and, and it's going to help me uh, really uh, get into the more advanced coding because I've always been using sort of the uh, block coding interface. But now I can finally use the Python interface, and I can use this knowledge base to really convert all the blocks from the Scratch system into Python. And I think that's a, and I think that's a really really good thing. So what are the pros and the cons of the set? Well, for the pros, you get five amazing different robots. They're so cool. They have different modules for pretty much each of them. They are just some of the best robots I've seen in a robotics kit ever. Another big pro is the compatibility with Powered Up. You can connect any Powered Up motor to the new Spike Prime system, uh, code it however you want. You can use the built-in rotation sensor into all of the Powered Up motors to have it run for a specific number of degrees or rotations and all that good stuff. I really, really appreciate the compatibility with the powered up system. And that is something that a lot of fans have been concerned about. Another big pro of this set is the absolute positioning motors. I cannot stress enough just how much of an advantage this is over the previous motors. Having absolute positioning allows you to create different walkers without ever using touch sensors for synchronization. This is a huge upgrade. But now let's talk about the cons of this set. Uh, first of all, it does not support daisy chaining out of the box, unfortunately. Uh, it might come with a future software update. You know, the powered up system when it first came out, it was very bad, but now, you know, some people even consider it to be better than power functions. That is because it's now fully customizable, it has so many different new blocks and just so many different cool coding possibilities and possibilities with integrating into your technic sets so i do expect that this so, so i do expect that a software update will come out to support daisy chaining in the future but let me know what you think of this set down in the comments below i am really curious as to whether or not you will be getting it or not i really appreciate this set i cannot stress how much i love this set this is jordan brick here and i'll see you in the next one